In this video, I'm going to balance very dim ambient with very bright flash to create an amazing festive image. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how you can balance the ambient light with flash, but with a bit of a difference. Normally the ambient light is the brightest part of your picture and the flash is just filling in. But in this case, our ambient light is going to come from these little guys. Yep, Christmas lights. These are going to be the ambient lights, very dim, and we're going to balance it with flash that's very bright. Let's see how we get on. So my little festive Christmas lights, they're going to be the background of the picture. Now we're going to blur these out of focus using a technique known as bokeh. Now you can find out how to do the basic mechanics of bokeh by checking out my episode Amazing Bokeh, episode 114 here on Adorama TV. That's the background, but we need a foreground subject to photograph as well. I'll go set that up now. Now, it really doesn't matter what your subject is, the technique is gonna be the same. I've gone for a Christmassy subject because it fits in with the Christmassy background. And I also found this little sort of twig from the, in the garden and well, it all seems to work quite well. Now, I've got this a fair way away from the background and that's important to get those nice blurry orbs of bokeh. All we need to do now is set the camera up. Right, so what I've done is I've gone nice and close. I focus just on my foreground object. The lens is wide open, f4, and I'm on 100 ISO. That's all the right ingredients for great bokeh. The only thing left to do is to choose a shutter speed. And I'm gonna do that myself using manual mode. We're not gonna use any of the automatic modes. So why am I gonna use manual? Well, we're trying to mix different light sources. Very, very dim ambient light, very bright flash, and manual is the way to go because it gives me maximum control and I'm going to need it. Okay, so I'm going to start with, oh, well, what we're going to use, 15th of a second. Why not? It's a good place to start and they look pretty dim lights. So 15th of a second. <laughs> yeah, they're really dim, aren't they? Um, they're actually darker than I thought. I thought that would be close. That's not even close. Let's go for two more stops of light. So we'll choose a quarter of a second. And that's getting better. That's still darker than I wanted though, I'll be honest with you. So I'm gonna go for, let's go for a full one second exposure. Can it be that dark? Yes, it can. That looks about right. So I'm happy with that exposure and that is my first exposure. The foreground object has come out as a silhouette and that makes sense, think about it. The background is brightish, well, it is at one second anyway, and more light is on the background than is on the foreground object. So of course the foreground object comes out as a silhouette. Now, if you don't want a silhouette, and I, I, although I actually quite like that silhouette look, we definitely want to light this subject. So we're going to light it with flash. Let's get a flash and add it in. Now, because we're mixing different light sources, I need to be in full control. We're in manual for the camera, and I'm going to be in manual for the flash. That means I can control the flash power output and I'm gonna dial it down to, well, we've gotta start somewhere, so let's start at a 30 second power. It's in slave mode, which means all I need to do is pop up the little flash on the, the Canon 60D and that will trigger the flash gun to fire when I press the shutter. Okay, so let's take a picture. It's still one second exposure, that's not gonna change. We've established that's the right exposure for the background, I'm not gonna change it. But what we're trying to establish is the right exposure of flash on the foreground subject. And wow, that was way too much. Okay, so yeah, not that much flash. So let's dial this down. We're gonna come down quite a bit. I reckon we're gonna end up right at the bottom. So let's go down as, as, as low as this unit will go. That's 128th of its normal power. And all I do is I take another shot, still one second exposure, remember that isn't going to change, and that looks okay, but it's still slightly bright. Now I can't make this any lower, so what, what am I gonna do? 
Well, first thing I'm going to do is just think about the, the setup I've got here, the mechanics of it. This little pop-up flash is firing and triggering the, the main flash to fire. Thing is, it produces a tiny amount of light when it does it. But we're on such a low power with this flash that that tiny amount from the pop-up is adding to the picture. To get around it, I'm going to get my hand and just cover the flash. Not completely, I'm not going to put it right on the flash because that wouldn't trigger the, the main unit. I'm just going to put it in front so none of the light from the pop-up hits our subject. Okay, here we go. So it's still fired the main flash, but less light hit the main object because none of that pop-up light actually came forward. It just went to the side and the end result is perfect. So what could you do if 128th and you've, you've covered your flash and it's still a little bit too bright? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. First one's really obvious. That's to get your flash and move it. Okay, so if you move it further away, the light travels further and less light hits your object. Now you could also do that by just bouncing the flash off the ceiling or off a wall. That would also work. Other things you can do, well, you can modify the flash. So you could, for example, put a umbrella or a softbox here just to, to soften the light down. You could even get gels that will neutralize this by putting a, a literally a neutral density gel on the flash. Now, if you want to get more tips on how to balance flash and ambient, then don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center where there's lots of great tips, helps, and tricks to get your flash work up to scratch. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I'm not so happy with is just the feel of it. I actually really liked the silhouette that we had earlier without the flash. But I still want a bit of flash in there because I wanted to give it a bit of an edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flash and I'm going to move it a whole, ooh, look at that, 40 centimeters, I reckon, just off to the side. So now I'm rear illuminating the, the object. The light's just coming in from the behind, but that should still give me light on the twig and on the edge of our Christmas decoration. Okay, let's just take the shot. Still a one second exposure, still 128th power. None of that's ever gonna change. The end result is a very different looking shot. It's a silhouette with an edge, and that's exactly the picture that I want. Now, if you want to keep seeing videos from myself and the other great presenters here on Adorama TV, then you need to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.